Uh, we now have the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury. We say good morning to Darren Jones uh, with this one. Darren, everybody's having a chuckle about the, uh, the Conservatives being the party of, of change. Uh, were you chuckling? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, uh, but also, look, we, you know, here in Westminster, we always love the who's up, who's down, who's back uh, stories. But what really matters is whether the Conservative Party, uh, its, its performance is going to improve. Uh, for people at home, they will know that the economy is heading in the wrong direction, that the cost of living is an ongoing problem for them, that the Tories crashed the economy last year, resulting in higher mortgage payments, that our public services are in crisis. And I'm not sure they really mind who's around the cabinet table. They just want a Conservative Party that will hopefully get a grip of the country again, which unfortunately, based on the past 13 years, I don't suspect they will. Though. I mean, just a few days ago at the weekend, Servation did this poll. They said that if Labour went to an if there was an election today, uh, Sir Keir Starmer would get a bigger landslide than Tony Blair got in 1997. Does the fact, though, that David Cameron, Cameron is back in one of the top offices of state change that? You know, he's, he's an electoral winner. He's had two big successes in the past. Well, that's for the voters to decide. But my observation would be that having David Cameron as Foreign Secretary doesn't solve Rishi Sunak's problems. In fact, it's quite odd uh, to me that Rishi Sunak has had to look to the past uh, to try to bring back a quote unquote grown up uh, to help get a control of the Conservative Party and its performance in the country. If Rishi Sunak was a good enough prime minister. Uh, no, but my point still stands. If Rishi Sunak was a good enough prime minister, he would be able to get a grip of this, and he's failed well, to I do so. Well, I believe it's been done by Labour in the past. Lord Mandelson, Lord Adonis both brought in uh, not MPs at the time. So it's an allegation you can lay to your previous leaders as well. Yeah, and look how that worked out. We lost the election in 2010. What really matters is whether the Conservative Party's performance is going to improve. And based on Rishi Sunak's speech at Conservative Party conference, based on his King speech, based on what we're expecting in the autumn statement next week from Jeremy Hunt, I just don't think that's the case. And Darren, there must be so much of you, if you were to win the election, that is excited about uh, what you would get control of. And as at the moment, Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, what, though, is your, is your fear of what you will inherit? Well, look, uh, we're not taking any of the poll leads uh, with any sense of complacency. We know that we have a huge amount of work to do in a very high number of constituencies across the country, in every breadth and every corner of the country, to persuade people to vote for us at the next election. And we're going to work really hard to try to win the trust of the British people when that election comes. But look, you're right. Uh, the inheritance that we would have if we were to win the next election is, is pretty daunting. I mean, the Conservatives' failure over the last 13 years is of a scale, I think, it's uncomparable based on previous elections. Uh, my job in the Treasury with Rachel uh, Reeves is made all the more difficult because of the mess that we've been inheriting from the Conservatives in government. Higher debt uh, than ever before, high interest rates, public services uh, on their knees, and a cost of living crisis that's affecting everybody across the country. We make, uh, we make uh, no slight of the fact that that's going to be a really hard thing to do in terms of turning around the country. But we know the Conservatives can't clear up their own mess. Uh, we will be willing to do that, but then also to put in place our plans to bring forward a decade of national renewal in this country. Um, I believe you're putting pressure on Tory MPs with a motion to ban trust-style budget meltdowns again in the future. How will you be doing that? Um, and I ask you this because it's the very day that Liz Truss is, uh, through her group, the Growth Commission, calling for pre-budget uh, Tax cuts, spend reforms to boost GDP ahead of uh, the autumn statement. Yeah, so Liz Truss is at it again, isn't she? She's calling for unfunded tax cuts that when she did it when she was Prime Minister uh, caused the market to collapse. And you might remember that one of the problems at that time was that Liz Truss uh, didn't let the Office for Budget Responsibility publish its independent assessment of the consequences of the political decisions that politicians Something that Rishi Sunak that has time. moved away from, uh, yeah. Uh, sure, but what he can do this evening is vote with us in the Labour Party to give additional statutory powers to the Office of Budget Responsibility so that it has the independence to publish that independent assessment at any major fiscal event, irrespective of whether a politician says yes or no. We think the public deserve that transparency and we think politicians uh, would be better uh, by having that check and balance in the system. So let's see if the Conservative Party votes with us this evening. It shouldn't be a controversial vote.
Okay. Darren Jones, good talking to you. you. Darren's the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, speaking to us live there from Westminster. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much.